Hello, DP Review TV viewers. This is Don Komarechka here for an episode on the quality of light and why that matters to us when we're taking pictures and displaying them. Definitely an episode worthy of a lab coat. When we think about the quality of light, we often think about it in terms of what color it is. But there's more to it than that. Uh, the sun, for example, emits a very even spectrum of light in the visible spectrum that we can see with our own eyes. And we can test that with a spectroscope just like this. They cost around $15 and they'll let you basically look at a particular light source and see exactly what kind of spectrum quality it has. How many of the different wavelengths that we can see with our own eyes are actively being emitted by that light source. And that's important because a lot of artificial light sources aren't as good as you think. Let's take a look. Not all lights are made the same, and we're about to test exactly how different lights will output different qualities of light. Uh, we've got a halogen bulb, we've got some compact fluorescence, some LED bulbs, flashes and flashlights that we're all going to test. Now, in order to test them properly, I've cut a small hole in this box, and I have put two razor blades just letting a tiny little slice of light come through. On the other end, we're going to have a camera set up with a diffraction grating. It's very much the same as this guy right here, except it's designed for astronomy to see what stars are made out of. I can put that on a camera, then I can analyze it and see exactly what our lights are doing for us. If we start testing with a halogen bulb, it's got one of the nicest light sources that you can get. It's why museums use these and see what happens when we look through the camera. What we're able to see here is that tiny little slice of light coming through the box spreads out into the entire spectrum and we can see how much of the light source is actually transmitting different wavelengths of light. Why is that important? Well, some lights like halogen bulbs do a great job, but others like compact fluorescent bulbs, they do a very terrible job at representing the entire color spectrum. That's important because while our eyes get tricked into thinking that this light is actually true white light, it's missing some very significant chunks of the electromagnetic spectrum that we call light. Now, in that case, if you were to use a poor quality light to take a photograph of something, the colors might be skewed. And we're gonna go through some examples of that and see exactly what happens when you use a poor light and what other lighting options actually look like. We can test out an experiment to see how the quality of our light affects our pictures. And I made these uh, simple little test examples of colors that I thought were a little bit tricky to deal with with the compact fluorescent bulb. Um, and so if I take photos of both of these, one under the CFL and one under the halogen bulb in a completely calibrated environment, the printer is calibrated, the camera is calibrated, no matter how well you calibrate things, uh, you still have that element of the light source and the quality of that light. So how do they stack up? Well, uh, the compact fluorescent bulb, uh, the CFL does not look quite as good. Uh, it's a little bit duller in terms of the color and definitely less accurate. And the halogen bulb, uh, that's why these are used, again, in museums and other uh, very high-end fine art structures, art galleries, etc. cetera. Um, they're more expensive. They put out a ton of heat and uh, they're really not that efficient anymore. So where do LEDs stand in this landscape? Well, they're somewhere in between. Uh, they're usually pretty good across the entire spectrum, dipping down a little bit in the blues. Uh, more expensive LEDs that are intended to be used for photographic purposes, they tend to have a, a higher spectral response across that blue area, and there's fewer gaps in between. Uh, at the end of the day, what we're learning here is that the quality of the light that we use, that we see the world in, our inside world, is really dependent on how much we value that accuracy. The effect becomes much more dramatic when you intentionally cut out portions of the visible spectrum. Uh, for example, I have an Ishihara colorblindness test. And by the way, if you have normal vision, you should be seeing a 29. Uh, if you have certain types of colorblindness, you might see a 70 here. But if I were to switch my light source to be, say, just green, that pattern goes away. 
Uh, and this is actually a technique that film photographers shooting black and white had used for decades, where you could specifically choose uh, you know, reds to be brighter, blues to be darker, etc., uh, when you are controlling what light the camera ends up seeing by filtering the lens. Uh, in terms of the way that we see things like this, I prefer to see it the way it is. Well, thank you everybody for going down this rabbit hole of light with me. Uh, it's amazing how much differences in the quality of light can affect things around us and how we perceive things. Uh, the human mind and the human eyes are vastly different from the technology that we use to create images. Uh, and it's fun to explore what those differences are. If you have any ideas for future episodes, please let us know in the comments and follow us uh, myself personally on Twitter and Instagram, as well as DP Review. These are fun to make. I'm looking forward to more. And by the way, magenta isn't actually a color. This might be surprising to you, but you don't actually see magenta in a rainbow. It's created in our minds when we see both red light and purple light at the same time. That kind of closes the loop of the visible spectrum being a, a circle in our own minds and how our brains understand that information. There's a lot of tricks that our brains do with the visual input that we get, and magenta is one of them. Mm -hmm.